We just made this no slip, interchangeable welcome porch cleaner, and we'll show you how we did it right now. What is up? Welcome back. Do you like to do a builder to make it? So do we. And we have new videos each week. This week's gonna be a good one. Who doesn't love interchangeables? That's right, everybody loves a good interchangeable project. And we were asked to create an interchangeable welcome porch leaner. Now, we kind of already have that. We have the welcome vertical kit and we have the interchangeable accents, but they've been around a while. A little bit stale, outdated. So we thought this was a perfect opportunity to update all of the accents. As a matter of fact, we've created 16 new accents so you can change them every month. So we thought we would teach you how to create the porch leaner, paint up some new accents, and show you what we've got. Step one, we're gonna gather all of our supplies. We needed two six foot pressure treated dog-eared fence pickets. These are gonna be our actual leaner piece. And we needed a brace. So we have a one by four by eight foot. This is also pressure treated. Now, we typically use a little bit shorter gothic fence picket, also pressure treated in this one by four size, but I couldn't find it. So this eight foot board was like the same price as the picket. So, and I can get eight different braces out of it. So four sets of pickets, it's perfect substitution. We needed some glue, some one and a quarter inch brad nails. We also needed some washers and some magnets. They'll We're be stuck together right now. Those will be for the interchangeable accents and attach them to the boards. And we'll be using our Foxy Use paints. This is outdoor craft paint, so it's perfect for an outdoor project like this porch leaner. We're gonna paint the pickets with this paint, and we're also gonna be painting our accents with this paint. So this is great because it'll be outdoors, in the weather, and in the elements. It's UV resistant, weather resistant, mildew resistant. It's gonna be perfect to paint those accents. Step two, we're gonna create our design. We're gonna start in Canva. We're gonna pull out some clip art that we can use for the accents. Kim's already started gathering some things. Let's go see what she has. So to get our accents, we're gonna start in Canva. I asked Kim to pick out just a couple of, like a handful of <laughs> accents that we'd be able to make 3D for this door leaner or this porch leaner. And this is what I see, like <laughs> pages. There's pages, Kim. There's well <laughs> It looks like there's one for every month. Yeah, except for one month. I think there's 11, but one of them I thought we could get two off of one page. Now, I know it looks like a lot, but I was giving you options, but I haven't narrowed down for each season of which one I would choose. Okay. And you can tell me if you if that was too much or not. Okay, all right. Because we are trying to keep these interchangeable. I'm not trying to make a whole door round for mm -hmm. each season. Well... This penguin looks pretty easy. That's that's the one I chose for that one. Good oh, job. Okay, all right. Okay, for this one. I'm liking the lips. I really like the lips too, but they were two pieces and I wasn't sure how they would magnet on. Oh, I could put them on a round backer or something or even move them over to the postage stamp. Something. Well, I chose, I thought the easiest one would be the yeah cherub or whatever that is. Oh, it just looks or, like a pudgy guy with wings now. We can use love from Love Stripes. I, sometimes there's notes in there for you. Oh, okay. <laughs> I thought that was just a note from me. Okay, so St. Patrick's Day or March. I'm uh, thinking the top hat. Yeah, I was thinking the top Let's hat. keep it simple. We're okay. on the same page. Okay, this one for Easter. I saw this cute one with a bunny and a half of an egg. So I thought either you, I didn't want to take it too far. Oh, it looks like you're already doing that. Oh, you're yeah. just trying to see the yeah, bunny. Yeah, I was trying to see the bunny. Well, he's really cute and it's easy to see on a black background. Can you change that background? Anyway, I thought one of those little bunnies right there, that one doesn't have the whiskers, which I know would be hard. Yeah, and you just want them in an egg? Well, uh, yeah, I also, yeah, I saw that. Oh, I, I like the bunny butt basket. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Okay, I'll let you, I'll let you decide which is easiest. All right, this is the hardest one. I was really thinking, unless you got a better idea, maybe maybe all I need is a, you know what I need? An umbrella for April. Hmm? An April umbrella? Mm -hmm. An umbrella and some boots and just so kind of combine them together. I don't even have that here. So I had, you're saying you're, I had not, you're not done. You're not done. <laughs> well, I had a, it was just recently expi right. inspired. So that was March, April, May, uh -huh. June. June. So this is June and July. I thought uh -huh. you could do this for June and July. 
I love that little watermelon with his sunglasses. Does he not scream summer all day? <laughs> he he just and the the partners up there, the watermelon and the pineapple. Those they're two, too much, but I love them together. They look like they're too much. Like I'm not sure I would invite them <laughs> Dude, to my party. Yeah, you want to invite them to your party because someone's going in the pool. <laughs> and then look at that pineapple with the sunglasses. All right, are they all too much for summer? Do I just do a watermelon? Look, I got something simple. A simple watermelon one? flip-flops. No, I like the little guy with the glasses. Okay, so that's June, July. Here's another one for July. Oh, because I was thinking... I like this um, guy for, like, July. Oh, actually, I did 4th or of June. July. Go down. Oh. Yeah. Oh, you yeah, got extra are. months. For, 4th of July. So for July, um, there is that red... The little... Yes. The top hat? Uh-huh. Yeah, the top hat. I feel like we already got a top hat going, though. Well, we could do a simple star. We could yeah. do the United States. Star's we could do the bad. ice cream cones. We could do, like, that half flag that everybody does, you know? Oh, That's, this, the mm-hmm. banner thing? hmm Yeah. I think I See? like the banner okay. thing idea. All right, all right. All right, so that's July. August. All right, maybe one of those other summer ones for August. That's what I was thinking. Go okay. back up. And then... So this is September now? Yeah, September. Got to go back to school. And you know what I love? The owl. You can see once I hit the owls, I was in on the owls with the glasses and the yeah, little book. Yeah, but who thinks that's back to school? Oh, I mean, I didn't... I wanted it to be for someone who might not have little kids. Oh, well, then they wouldn't care about school at all, right? Uh-huh. True that. I kind of like this one for... Back to school. Okay. And you could be like, back to school. <laughs> <laughs> right there on the edges of the books. Uh-huh. When we can all get in the musical. Yeah. October. Oh, I like this witch. I like this witch thing going on. Okay. That would be a good O, right? Yeah. Oh, it's a witch. And then I am loving the November. Look how cute. The turkey? Yes. Yeah, this Aren't one? They? No. Actually, I liked that guy. Nope. Either any of them are funny. I just think they're all funny. I like this little fat guy. He can choose whether or not to put his eyeballs cross-eyed or not. Totally. And, uh, oh, December. I was losing it by the time I got to December. Yeah, it's looking sparse. Yeah. (laughs) But I thought the um, ornament is where I landed was just the ornament. And I just, that's why I didn't go any further. All right. Sounds good. So I'm going to download all of these and pull out the ones that... I think you Should, want. You want me to just delete some of those others before you even download it so it doesn't, or do you want to save your options out there? I'll save my options in, in case some of them aren't true SVGs Okay. and I have to do an image trace or something. Okay. I pulled all of the accents that Kim wanted out of Canva. I pulled them into Illustrator. I've already sized them all, so they should fit. Now I'm going to pull them apart and make them into actual cut files. We'll start with this little pen- penguin. Let's ungroup and see what we're working with. All right, not too bad. All right, first thing I'm going to do is grab everything, and then I'm going to copy Control C. Now, right here, I'm going to unite everything using my Pathfinder tool. Let's see, he's got some little cut marks here. If I go to release and then reunite, it'll get rid of all those guys. So this backer will include his feet, so I'll keep it orange for now. Now I'm gonna do Control Shift V, which will paste what we copied right back into place. Now we don't need his feet anymore, so we can get rid of these guys. His feet will be back there. What's that? That's his belly, Control Z. That's his body, oh, this is pretty easy. So I'm gonna grab everything again. I'm gonna go copy paste all right now down here i don't need his the back part anymore so i'll get rid of this now i want to put all of these little pieces back on his little scarf and make it a third row or a third layer but i want this white piece to cut out of his whole body so i'm gonna hold shift and grab all these pieces that i want to make a third layer I'm going to copy, paste. There you go. Here's my third layer. I'll put them down here. Now all of these pieces, I'm going to say are score marks. So I'm going to lose the fill. And I'm going to give these a dark blue score line or 
dark blue stroke. Oops, I missed his nose. Lose the fill, give it a dark blue stroke. Now I want this piece to cut out of this piece. And I think I just want his eyes to cut out too. I'm gonna hold shift and select all of those. I'm gonna lose the fill. I'm gonna give these a red stroke. All right, there's one of them. I'm gonna group all of these. Group down here. I can move these up a little closer. Select everything here. We'll lose the fill and give it a red stroke. Now this should stack on here and I know exactly where to place it. Now up here, you don't really need any of this stuff anymore. I'll grab everything. All of this stuff, we can delete that because uh, his body will line up right over top of that. I'm gonna grab this, we'll lose the fill and we'll give it a red stroke. I'm gonna group this whole piece now, keep them together. If you like this kind of content, I do this illustrator class once a month over on Patreon. You should totally come join us there. I'm going to turn the rest of these into cut files, but I don't think you want to watch all of that. So I'll meet you back on the other side. Step three, we're going to make all of our cuts. We're going to take the quarter inch MDF over to our Aeon Nova 14 and start cutting out our accents. He's got a big, giant sheet of MDF to really show you what he's going to be using. It's the real <laughs> one that's going in there. It's not a stunt board. <laughs> Well, the accents are cutting out over on the laser. We're going to cut out our three brace pieces. Each piece is going to be 11 inches. We're going to cut them out of the pressure treated one by four. We're going to make all of these cuts with my buddy, pocket saw. Just whip them out of my pocket. This is our seven and a quarter inch Ryobi. Uh, what is this? Miter saw. Miter saw. <laughs> I'm on it. He's on it. You're on it, Kim. Oop. Step four. Time to paint the pickets. <laughs> We're not going to use the paintbrush. We're going to use the foam roller and the handle. Roll the whole thing. And we're gonna paint them in our Foxy Hughes color Heist Haze. This is a great neutral. It's my favorite neutral color. It's like a taupe color. And I think that will be great to contrast against the color in the different accents. So I, I don't want it to be too dark. I don't want it to blend too much. So I know I'm gonna paint the pickets with this Heist Haze. Now Garrett and I were just having a uh, spirited debate. <laughs> a spirited debate on what color the cross braces should be. Now I could paint them the same color, but I think that's a little bland. I was thinking they should have a little contrast. And then I originally suggested that I contrast it with this black and have the cross braces be in black. But then he said, so that's going to look chunky, <laughs> chunky, whatever that means. You need to have a contrast, but not something so sharp. So I was thinking like this, Goose Gourmet Gray. It's a very dark gray. I feel like it's very dark. It'll give you that contrast, but it won't take away from the letters and the accent in the middle. And then I was like, well, I'm not really thinking gray um, because I don't think, I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't love that. You won't even put them close to each other. Yeah, you can't even get close yeah, to one another. So then my suggestion was, why don't we stain them, just the cross braces, and stain them in this Verithane sandstone here. And then there's a contrast, but it keeps it in that neutral family. What yeah, do you think? I think in about 15 minutes, you'll say, oh, I don't like that. I don't like that either. <laughs> So the cross braces are still up in there. Yeah, we're still that's still a work in progress, but we can start on the pickets. I know I'm going with those in this light color. Move the 
pickets out of the way so they can dry. <laughs> and while they're drying, we're gonna paint all of our little accent pieces. I put them in frames. I think we're just gonna paint them and assemble them so that we don't have a million pieces spread out everywhere. Right, one at a time. One at a time. Step five, time to assemble it. We're gonna bring it all together with a little bit of glue and some brad nails. We're gonna use these two black pieces as our front braces. We're gonna use one at the top and one at the bottom. And then this is our back brace, but first we're gonna use it as a spacer or a guide so we know where to put our braces in the front. Yep, makes it super easy. So. No measuring. Now we're gonna lay out all of our letters to get our spacing down so we know where everything goes. And we'll glue these and tack these with a brad also. We have to leave space for the, uh, the O. That's spelled wrong. Yeah, I don't know. And whose who's language is it spelled wrong, Kim? Oh, you don't so know we don't actually spelled. have an O? Don't you think we need an, an actual O? For what? Oh, I guess you can't ever put the actual O on because the magnet will be here, right? Yeah. Okay. It's gonna look weird. Alright, what do you think? I think it looks great. We're gonna glue them down now. We're using some wood glue to glue it to the wood. Downgrade my brads. I want to shoot out the back. I'll get these little guys. These little half inch brads. The nail, not the guy. I'm going to fill the nail holes with one of these little micro tips. Just going to dip into the white paint. To attach the accents to the pickets, we're going to use one super strong magnet, and then each of the accents is going to have a washer attached to the back of it. Now, Garrett has an ingenious method on keeping these accents from moving. These accents, or some of them are two layers and they're a little bit heavy. And while the magnet is certainly going to hold the, the washer and the magnet together, they're nice, this is super strong. Over time, I don't want it to kind of slip and slip. slide. So we built a frame to go around the magnet that's gonna actually get attached around the washer. So the washer and the magnet will hold each other together and then this little frame around the washer We'll hook onto the magnet and keep it from sliding down the board. Yeah, so smart. Yeah. Because that star bond, I'm going to attach this MDF to this MDF, and that star bond is going to keep that thing from moving. So his little frame is going to keep that accent from sliding around. We're going to attach this magnet to the pickets using star bond. We're going to use an excessive amount of star bond. We really want to make sure that this thing is attached to the pickets. And this is a gap filler, so it is going to fill in any gap. So it's going to be great if there's any kind of spacing in between your pickets. These are really close together, so I think we're going to be good. Uh, but if there's any spacing, that should help fill the gap there uh, between the two pickets. Garrett's got another great idea on how we're going to attach this ring to the back of the accent. 
So if you just eyeball it here, you're not really going to know where it sets in the spacing between the M and the C. So what we're going to do is lay the frame around the magnet, add the star bond. Now make sure that the star bond does not touch the magnet because you don't want those two attaching right now. That'll be your permanent accent. <laughs> All right, so the glue is on the ring, and now we're able to eyeball where we want. Like this? Well, he's actually going to sit probably like that, but I really just need to focus on spacing between the two, right? Yeah. So that looks like that's there. Now we're gonna lift it, and the ring is gonna be attached right where we want it to be. Throw some more star bond in here around the edges, make sure you keep that frame attached. And then we're just gonna drop a washer into the frame. Set this aside, let it dry, and move on to the next one. Step six, and now we have the accents. But not these guys, not yet. First, we're gonna add some ribbon on the top and bottom. Yeah, so the great thing about this is you can actually switch out the ribbon at the top and bottom. Well, for the bottom, I think I'm just gonna leave this little twine at the bottom. But for the top, you can make this ribbon match the season or you can keep it neutral and leave it all year round, one black and white color. Um, you want me to do this one first then? Yeah, we'll do the bottom and then we'll stand it up. Can you see the up? Yeah, I think it passes the wind test. A little slamming around. And uh, the magnet's strong enough for it. So I could kind you, of pull at it. You can take it back off again. <laughs> so cute. Yeah. Alright, did we miss did we miss an accent? I think we have all of the accents. We have 16, but I did think of one. Yesterday, Kim and Mike came for a visit and she said something about her daughter's birthday, and I was like, oh. We need a oh, birthday, birthday accent. Yeah, I mean, we gave them a school one, but no birthday. Yeah, we'll birthday back to school. Accent. That so. was my September. So definitely gonna do a birthday cake. What else? What else do I need that I missed? Well, yeah, what else? I, I know of another one that yeah. I missed. If you have one that we've missed, leave it in the comments below. And maybe Kim will go ahead and find the 10,000 pieces of clip art <laughs> for that piece. <laughs>